Join in with Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church every second weekend of each month. Sunday service will be at Atlanta, Georgia at 957 Metropolitan Parkway at 4 o'clock p.m. We looking forward to seeing you and be blessed. You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. As for the word that has spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not talk unto thee. We, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing go forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto the Now, why did they mention they're going to serve the Queen of Heaven? The Queen of Heaven was Easter. Amen. The word Easter comes not indirectly, you no, listen, directly from the word Easter.
important teaching tonight. Amen. I'm going to deal with the false spirit called Easter. Amen. And proved by scripture, it is a, and by historical reference, that it is a, a, a false spirit. It's, it's not of the Bible, and there is no record where any prophet or apostle ever celebrated that pagan festival. Uh, before we have some uh, praise reports, uh, little daughter Sarah, 26 pieces of gold. Amen. Elder Lansing, $100. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Elder Brooks, $200. Amen. Elder Marshall, $50. Amen. Elder Ricky, $100. Amen. Evangelist Brooks, five pieces of gold. Amen. Elder Marshall again, $220. Amen. Daughter Hutchison, $400. Amen. Thank God again for uh, the sacrifice yes. of the faithful. Amen. And again, uh, I promise you uh, that your sacrifice or your labor most certainly is not in vain. God promised to bless us. Wait a minute, I got another one here. Already called that one. All right. God promised to bless us. And this life and the life to come, yeah. eternal life. Amen. Now you can't beat that. Amen. Blessing in this life and the life to come, right, eternal life. Amen. All right. Uh, let me get, uh, I think I want First Timothy. Open up a little foundation here. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, let's pick right up in verse, verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, uh, the apostle starts out this teaching here, and he, he, he lets us know, if you're in the true faith, you're going to suffer persecution. They'll come against you. Amen. They got so bad last night, uh, they parked on the corner in front of somebody's house waiting for them to come out so they could jump on them. Amen. Amen. And thank the Lord some of the elders saw them. Amen. And, and pointed them out and told them of their error. So, uh, brothers and sisters, when God uncovers a false spirit, Amen. he snatches that blanket completely off right. and the true character is revealed. You know, no matter what you do to an individual, if they're rooted and grounded in holiness, you're not going to drive them away from the foundation of their faith, Amen. if they are what they say they are. Amen. But brothers and sisters, we know uh, Jesus gave that teaching, Matthew 7, by their fruit, you shall know them. Amen. What a powerful teaching God gave. Not by whether or not they can dance or sing or shout, Amen. but by their lifestyle. Amen. Amen. You will know whether or not they are my fold, if they're of my sheep. Amen. My sheep hear my voice. Amen. And a devil ain't gonna follow. Amen. Amen. Good right. Now we'll say amen. 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 Uh, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. Watch. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Continue in the things which you have learned, yes. knowing who you learned from. Now, drop down to verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. All scripture is given by God and is profitable for what? For doctrine. For, for instruction, for teaching. Now, again, you can't find Easter. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 9. You cannot find Easter nowhere recorded in the Bible, in the original text of the Bible. Now, I'm not talking about that passage over in Acts, I believe, 12th chapter, where the Roman, or rather the Church of England, inserted the word Easter next to Passover. But Easter and Passover are two different contexts, two different principles of religion 
altogether. Amen. Easter was celebrated 2,000 years before Moses, Amen. as Christmas was. Christmas was for the birth of Tammuz. <laughs> Easter was for his death and reincarnation. Had nothing to do with Christ Jesus. Amen. But when the Roman church, now I'm saying this, I want everyone, especially those viewing my way of YouTube, uh, those who uh, follow my teaching have heard this before, but those who are viewing by way of YouTube, maybe you've never been uh, correctly taught the truth of God's word. Hear me close. Anytime you celebrate a pagan festival, this makes you or puts you in a position of committing idolatry. That's right. Idolatry means heathen or pagan worship. Yeah. And regardless of how uh, innocent you may think it is, what well, I'm doing this for Jesus. But the Bible says you can do nothing for Jesus but for Jesus. Amen. The Bible says all scripture given by inspiration of God is proper for what? For the doctrine, doctrine for, for reproof, reproof, for correction, for correction, instruction in righteousness. instructions in righteousness Amen. or holy living. Easter has nothing to do with holiness. Amen. Amen. Easter ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. Praise the Lord. And another fact that proves the, the context of uh, Easter being in a pagan forum is the egg. Amen. Easter egg mm -hmm. that is passed out primarily to the children to seduce the children. Thank God we have the knowledge of the truth and we don't participate in that mess. Amen. Easter basket. Yeah. None of that is found in the Bible. Easter bunny. All right, Prophet. None of that, well, praise the Lord, whether it's made out of cotton candy or, or chocolate, it's still the same thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's still a pagan ritual, right. and we're not going to participate in it. The Bible tells us you're not to add on, and you're not to take away. Now, when the Roman church took over Christianity at the Council of Nicaea 325 under Constantine the Great, Constantine was a heathen worshiper. Yeah. If you research his... Uh, dossier of his life, you will find that Constantine worshipped the goddess Diana. Sure Diana is a replica of the Babylonian goddess Ishtar, whom the Bible refers to in 1 Kings 11th chapter as Astaroth. Amen. Now this female goddess who was actually Nimrod's wife, Samarimus, when he died, she took over the movement of the Babylonian cult of religion and pushed it to its highest form where the death, or rather the birth of her son was called the midwinter solstice that the Roman church called uh, Christ Mass, later shortened to me Christmas. And the death of Tammuz that the Roman church uh, called Easter for the resurrection and they supplanted the Christ in the place of Tammuz, instead of being for Tammuz reincarnation, they now named it for the resurrection of Christ. Amen, prophet. But again, brothers and sisters, you can't find that nowhere recorded in the Bible. Amen. And Good Friday, you can't find in the Bible. Amen. So all of these rituals introduced by Constantine, as I said, he was a worshiper of the goddess of Diana, which made him... A, a female deity worshiper. And this is very important because he tried to introduce Mary as divine, but it never did take root until the Council of Ephesus about 440, where the Catholic Church deified Mary and made her the Queen of Heaven. Now, give me, uh, what does it go? Deuteronomy 18 9, and then jump right quick into. Jeremiah 44th chapter. Amen. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, yes. thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. <clears throat> there shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer. Now it time. says here, when you come into the land, now again the prophet is warning the Hebrew people. Amen. When you come into these lands and you conquer these lands and you proselyte these people, First of all, Judaism is a religion. Judaism then becomes a nationality according to the religious belief. Jewish people are not a race of people. 
it has nothing to do with ethnic uh, background. It has to do with your religious persuasion. That's right, Bob. Amen. So there's no such thing as a race of Jewish people. That's right. There is a nationality of Jewish people based on their religious, again, belief. You have to understand this. So when you come into the nation that, that I give you for an inheritance, you don't learn these heathen customs. Yeah. Even though they are proselyted into the uh, uh, Hebrew fold and become Israelites, they do this by confessing Jehovah God. We know this by Naomi giving the instruction to Ruth to go back to her people. And Naomi said, or rather Ruth told Naomi, your people are my people. Your God is my God. This caused Ruth to be proselyted from a Moabite now into Judaism. Now she becomes an Israelite. Amen. It is plain to everybody. All right. So again, now the foundation of the seed of David comes directly from the lineage of Ruth, the Moabite. Amen. Amen. So we see again the fallacy of many teachings that have nothing to do with uh, scriptural truth. Now going back to the Roman Catholic Church again, when Constantine uh, took over at Nicaea, proclaimed himself Pontifex Maximus mm -hmm. and keeper of the faith. Yeah. He brought in these uh, heathen forms of worship, primarily female deity worship. But again, Mary was never deified until the Council of Ephesus 440, where they also introduced bead worship, Amen. the rosary. You say a prayer, you flip a bead. You say another prayer, you flip another bead. You can't find it in the Bible. Amen. So if it's not biblical, where's the foundation of truth? If you can't back it up in the Bible. Amen. This is why they don't like me too much because I back up everything I say with the Bible and historical reference books. Amen. So we, as long as we hold on to the Bible, church, God is always going to hold on to us because God is going to have a church. I told you this many times that will not bow and will not compromise, and will not take back. And we are that true light that cannot be hid. I believe the light the path of every man that cometh Amen. into the world. Amen. We are that true light. Yeah. Because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. So again, we have to understand certain things that have taken place because of a uh, belief based on certain traditions that have no Bible uh, uh, no Bible, Bible foundation. Amen. So again, uh, Easter is a pagan festival. Amen. It has nothing to do with any Christian origin or any Christian faith. Amen. But again, it is a part of a Roman Catholic uh, custom and tradition that has been incorporated into the Christian church after I said Nicaea uh, 325 and the subsequent Council of Ephesus in 440 where Mary worship bead worship, and uh, there was another festival introduced then. Uh, well, the Trinity took place at Nicaea. Now, the Trinity it means three gods, uh, taken from the word tri, which means three. Amen. So the apostles never worshiped three gods. Amen. Apostles said one Lord, Amen. one faith and one baptism. And again, as I said the other night, Jeremiah said, Lord is the true God. Now, again, we're going to further bring us into the Catholic religion as to this female deity worship as, uh, you know, the Roman church calls Mary queen of heaven. Now, we in Jeremiah 44 chapter, uh, pick up in verse 13. For I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt as I have punished Now, Egypt represents the world today if you understand spiritual interpretation. The prophet Jeremiah is speaking to a people in a present tense, but he's referring to a people also in the future tense. Now it says here, I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt. As I have punished Jerusalem. 
by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Yes. So that none of the remnant of Judah, which are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall escape or remain, that they should return into the land of Judah, to the which they have desired to return to dwell there, for none shall return but such as shall escape. Now let me break this uh, verse 14 down. The people would go back from Judah to uh, Egypt for the festivals of Christmas and Easter and uh, uh, the other festival that was identified with uh, feast, uh, the sacrifice uh, Lent. Lent, Lent fast or Lent sacrifice. Mm. They would go back and they would take part in these festivals and then return back to Judah. So what were they doing? They were carrying that heathen custom back right into Judah to corrupt the people in, 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 Ju in Judah. So God said, no, only the ones that escape. Escape means here, I'm through with that. I'm not going to go back there. I don't want any identification with that type of a religious movement. I don't want any uh, identification with that type of uh, uh, a pagan custom, those rituals. I'm through with that. So God says here, only the ones that escape. In other words, those who have made up their mind, they're through with it. They were uh, identifiable with it when they were in uh, Egypt. But now they have left Egypt. They're not going to go back there to take part in these festivals and then come back to Judah. Amen. No, they're through with that part. In Amen. other words, I can't go back to the world because I'm through with the world. I can't go to bars and Amen. discos. And, uh, I'm through with that. That's in my past. And the past is gone. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right, now pick up in verse 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people... Now, the multitude means a majority. Uh -huh. Even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, and Patros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord... As for the word thou hast spoken to us in the name of the Lord... We will not hearken unto thee. We won't, we won't listen. We're not going to pay no attention. Now, how, how deep is this? I tell people the truth over YouTube yep. almost every day. Amen. But how many are going to pay attention and listen? Uh, that sister uh, wrote me yesterday from, can, where is she from? Connecticut? I, I can't, can't call in that state. Matter of fact, I sent it to her even. I said, I don't know whether you got it or not. I sent it to you yesterday. Well, okay, we'll get it on Sunday. But the, the main thing is uh, she can't find a church, and she goes to a so-called Pentecostal church, but the pastor's wife don't wear a head cover, and so therefore the sisters don't wear no head cover, and they don't, they're not too friendly with her because every time she comes, she got a head cover. This condemns the rest of the congregation That's right. because they can't say, well, you're wrong because she back up my Bible because she has followed my teaching. Amen. 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 So, uh, so she feels very uncomfortable. Well, they'll make you uncomfortable. Yeah. Anytime you condemn the wicked and you righteous, you automatically going to be, praise God, you're going to be persecuted Amen. because they do not want to be pointed out as being in a false way when the pastor knows that it's wrong for you to try to teach anything and say you're teaching the truth, especially in a holiness church, a yeah. Pentecostal church, and the sisters don't have a head cover. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a weakness somewhere. Yeah. Amen. And some of my friends that I knew pastoring in, in Michigan, they don't want nothing to do with me because I said anytime you go to a church and you see the daughters and they ain't got a veil covering on, leave. Yeah. Oh, man, they, they can't handle that because they don't teach the head cover. Why? When you know it's right, and it's backed up in Harlem's Bible Dictionary of Religion, and Harlem's Dictionary of Religion is a religion, is a reference book. Yes. They don't care what church you go to. The only thing they point out is a fact of history. Yes. Yes. And if the history of the church means they wore a veil covering, why don't they wear it today? Because it's not popular. Why did they crucify Jesus? Because he wasn't popular. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we're not worried about popularity. We're worried about the truth. Amen. To not to celebrate Easter makes you unpopular. Amen. I was in Home Depot today, and, and, and uh, she, I know she let it slip because she didn't know. She said, now, uh, have a happy Easter. I said, I don't celebrate Easter. Amen. So I was waiting for her to say why, but she didn't. So I said, you want to know why? 
<laughs> she looked. She still ain't seen that. I said, because it's a pagan festival and it's not found in the Bible nowhere. Amen. She said, oh. <laughs> you have a nice day and I'm gone. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, these people just holler happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy Easter, and don't have the slightest concept of what they're talking about or what they're doing. Amen. You are identifying with idolatry. You can't identify with idolatry even if it's innocent. Amen. Because you can't participate or be a partaker of their evil deeds. Amen. And that is an evil deed. And, 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 and the apostles and the prophets have taught us a correct way to go. Amen. And we have to follow that correct way to go. Now, they'll follow Eastern Christmas, which ain't biblical, but won't follow the veil covering, which is Amen. biblical. Amen. So it shows you how important true light is. Amen. And church, you've got to encourage yourself. You've got to come to church to praise God and to worship yes. God, and you can't look around and find out who's happy or who's not. All right, Pastor Preacher. You make sure you're happy yes. even though you're going through the valley. Yes, Lord. Even you're going through your test and trials. Yes. You're happy. Why? Because your faith has made you happy. Yes. Your faith in Christ Jesus, when he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, I'm planting my feet on his promise, yes. and I'm going to yes. stay there. As to the word that has spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Yes. But, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. Now, why did they mention they're going to serve the queen of heaven? The queen of heaven was Ishtar. Right. Amen. The word Easter comes not indirectly, y'all listen, directly from the word Ishtar. Yeah. Once pronounced that way and spelt the same way. Yeah. Ishtar or Ishtar or Easter. Once was pronounced the same way and spelt the same way. The reason why they use this word Ishtar is or Easter is because of the Babylonian goddess. And, and if anyone can't understand that, all they got to do is go to the library and research these things for themselves. Now, why won't pastors do it? Because they don't want to know the truth. Amen. Because that puts them in a position to be preaching and teaching and knowing the truth and preaching and teaching a lie. And then when they get a cold or get sick, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Lord, forgive me. God, can God forgive you for being a coward? He said he has not given you the spirit of fear. Amen. So I can't be afraid to teach the truth Amen. if I back it up with scripture, but they won't listen. So what? You got to keep preaching it. Yes. If no, nobody won't listen, you still got to keep preaching it. If you say you called to preach. Amen. All right, brother. Praise God. But we certainly going to serve the queen of heaven. Let's find out about this queen of heaven over in, uh, uh, I'm in chapter 45, 44. Pick up in verse 25. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. You will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. Now they said, We're surely going to serve the Queen of Heaven. Uh, drink offerings and, and, and burning incense, that's a form of worship. All right, read. Therefore hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. All Judah that dwell in the land of Egypt, behold, I have sworn by my great name. Cool, glory. I like that part. I have sworn by my great name. Read. Saith the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God liveth. In other words, don't call me Lord. Don't go to church and praise me and worship me and you still celebrating Christmas and Easter. All right. Amen. Read. Behold, Behold, I will watch over them for evil, not for good. All right. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. In other words, praise the Lord, I'm going to cut you off. I'm right. going to destroy you. I'm going to beat you down. Praise the Lord. Read. Yet a small number that escape the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah. Those that escape from the world and come back to the holiness church, them are the ones that God is going to bless. So again, brothers and sisters, we have to fully understand who we are 
And while we've got to raise a standard, we've got to always hold out and hold on to the principles that the Bible has taught us that we don't deflect, that we don't go back because somebody is noticing us. Somebody's watching us, and somebody wants the truth. This daughter, amen, she, she wants so bad to find a church, amen. but she can't find a church that's teaching the truth. Amen. So what's the sense in going to a church when you know they're not living anything amen. for the Lord? Hey, you can't do it. You're uncomfortable. You're miserable. You can't sing, and you can't praise God. So the best thing I told her to do, stay at home. Uh, uh, and uh, today I wrote her, I said, what you need to do is either come, be with us in Spartanburg, or relocate to Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. You got a decision to make. She got three children, but don't worry about that. Right. Raise your children up in the way that it should go. Amen. Amen. And when it is old, they will not depart. Amen. So again, there are choices that people have to make. Yeah. And sometimes it's a difficult choice. Mm -hmm. But if God tell you to pack your bag and leave, pack your bags and leave. Amen. And don't look back. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lot. God sent an angel to save Lot and his family. But he gave them an instruction, and that's so very important. He said, now when you get on the pathway to freedom, I don't want you to look to the left or to the right. Now that was the instruction to prove whether or not you believe that God has sent the angel to set you free. Amen. That was a test of loyalty, the same as in the garden paradise yep. when he told him to don't eat of this tree in the yep. midst of the garden. The tree didn't have to be there, but God put it there. Amen. And God didn't have to tell him, don't look back. Amen. But he had to give them something, uh, some type of instruction to find out whether or not, do you really believe me? Amen. Are you really sincere? Yeah. Or do you just want to escape because you know you, are, you don't want to get destroyed back there? But do you believe that I'm the one? Who said you free? Do you want to serve me when you escape? And y'all know the story. They took the pathway of freedom, but one of them looked back. Amen. Look back symbolically means what? Yeah, I'm going. I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to give up what's back there. I don't want to give up my past life. I don't want to give up cigarettes. Drinking, lying, all right, all right, and Amen. cheating. I don't want to give up all of that in my my TV program that I watch late at night. Amen, brother. When ain't nobody watching. <laughs> Why you want to watch it? Oh, I just want to see what they're doing now, huh? I know them devils. No, that ain't why you watching. <laughs> you watching because you ain't got the right thing in you. All right, prophet. You got to get it out. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed yes. by the renewing yeah. of your mind. If you watch garbage, your mind going to be filled with garbage. But if you watch clean things, then your mind begins to be rejuvenated into clean thoughts. Right. And as a man thinketh in his heart, what? So is he. Amen. Praise God. So I've got to learn how to be Christ-like. And I can't learn it by watching a whole bunch of mess that has nothing to do with my walk with the Lord. That keeps me from praying. Some people watch more television than they do praying. Sometimes you got to cut that TV off and say, I'm going to pray a while. Get down and pray and pray and pray and wait till you feel something happening. Hallelujah. Sometimes you feel something lifting up. Yes. And, and brother and sister, prayer works. Yes. Me and Evangelist Wagner prayed about a situation a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Didn't see no way out of that situation. Looked like things were falling apart. But where's God? We prayed. And I got that phone call out of nowhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Instead of everything being negative, God took the negative and made a positive out of it. Yeah. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Amen. But again, church, I've said this before, and I'm trying to impart to you something. I've learned to live all I can for the Lord. I learned how to sell out for God. And I want you to do the same thing. And you can if you choose to. 
Do the best you can in running this race, and God will do the rest. Amen. Amen. That's why he gave us the spirit. Now, again, pagan festivals, we're not to have any identification with them at all. Get in Galatians, uh, first chapter. Amen. Uh, give me chapter 6. No, no, first chapter and jump into verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. Now, Paul is giving a warning to the church. I've been teaching you all along. Now, something happened, and all of a sudden, you, you believe something other than what I've been teaching you. Is that what he's saying? Read. Which is not another, but there be some. He's telling the, the church there's not another gospel. There's only one gospel. One teaching, one doctrine, yes. one set of rules and instruction for one church. Amen. And if there's one set of rules for one church, and there's one God over that one church, ought there not be one leader over the one church? Amen, Prophet. One leader will ask another leader, oh, what about this, or what about that? I don't want to say this because I don't want to offend you, and you don't want... That ain't nothing but foolishness. Amen. Say what you want. God never had denominations. And if you don't have denominations, then you can't have but one leader over the church of God. Amen. And though we might be diverse uh, uh, parts across the vineyard, we still got to speak the same thing. Amen. And there still can't be but one leader over that one body in Christ. Amen. Are we? But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now, is that deep? Yes. yes. He said, if an angel come down here and teach you something yes. that I ain't taught you, mm -hmm. he's accursed. Amen. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. He taking apostol apostolic authority. Amen. God called me. And I don't know about that angel. Amen. Right. Hey, he said, but if an angel, he, he, of course, he's he emphasizing the point. An angel ain't going to come down from heaven and teach something what the apostles have not taught. Amen. But he's trying to drive a point across. Right. He said, even if an angel tells you something Lord. different than what I've told you, he's a curse. Amen. Who cursed him? He said, he did. Amen. Uh, read. And we say, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. He repeated himself. Yes. Give me 1 John, verse 10. 2 John, verse 10. Amen. Why can't we just say happy Easter? Why can't we get the kids a little Easter basket as long as it ain't no great big one? <laughs> What's wrong with our little kids at least decorating one or two eggs? Where's the harm? The harm is in idolatry. The harm is in the tricks of Satan, the clever tactics of Satan to try to get your mind in the wrong direction. And here you thinking you doing something innocently and actually you practicing something that God told you not to do. Right. Read. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine. If someone comes to you and don't bring the Bible teachings. Receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's feet. Don't invite him into your house. Which is, 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 is manifold now. Amen. House means the church. House also means your temple, which Amen. is the temple of the living God. Amen. Neither bid him God speak. Yes. So when she said, have a happy Easter, not to offend, I could have said, well, you too. <laughs> that made me a, partic a partaker of her he evil deeds. Amen. Well, I said that because I don't want to be teaching hate. Is the apostle teaching hate? He said, don't invite him in your house. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's deep. Amen. Read that again. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, <laughs> receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. Watch. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Amen. If I say uh, happy Easter, I'm a partaker of the same evil deed. Amen. All right. Amen. Written by Prophet H. Walker. Huh? No. Who wrote that? John. Apostle John wrote that. Amen. Somebody said John, uh, Paul, but no. Not, uh, 
<laughs> Second John is written by the Apostle John. <laughs> in, way of, in way of a little correction. <laughs> Amen. So, so again, brothers and sisters, we have to make up our mind. We're going to serve God. Let's serve him. Amen. Amen. If we're going to be his church, let's be his church. Amen. And let's be, let's be happy about it. Let's be glad about it. Yes. yes. Thank you, not strange that God has chosen you for such a time as this. That's what Mordecai told, told Ruth. Uh, uh, told uh, uh, Brother Esther. He chose you for such a time as this. Now, ain't no sense in you trying to back away or back up or try to figure out some kind of way to get out. You can't get out. Amen. Why? Because God chose you. Lord. Amen. He chose you to suffer for him. Yet rejoice. Get talked about for him. Yet with happiness in your heart. The apostle, I'm closing. When they got beat for preaching Jesus, the Bible says they left that room rejoicing. Now, they were like fashion like we. They got beat by the cat of nine tail. Nine strips of leather with, with slivers of steel. Beat. And they left away from there rejoicing. And you think they wasn't in pain? But they didn't count the pain because the pain is natural. They count the spirit of the Lord in them to give them a joy that's unspeakable. A joy that passes understanding. Why am I happy? Because of Jesus. That's why I'm happy. Yes. Why am I not depressed when I don't have too much? Because Jesus made a promise. Yes. That's why I got to serve him. So understand fully about the Roman Catholic Church. Let's understand fully about this festival called Easter. And when you walk past and them kids look at them baskets and say, yeah, come on children, let's go. You don't want none of that. Amen. We'll go around here and get ice cream cone. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are not going to allow the spirit of deception to blind us to such an extent that we're going to compromise the word of truth. God never had a compromised church. And he never had compromised preachers. We're going to stand up and be counted. I thank God for the truth. Yes. I thank God for a made up mind. Yes. But I thank God for his word. You're right. But he sent the word, didn't he? But he never sent the word without a prophet. Amen. Amen. Join in with Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church every second weekend of each month. Sunday service will be at Atlanta, Georgia at 957 Metropolitan Parkway at 4 o'clock p.m. We're looking forward to seeing you and be blessed. Love Talk Radio.